Hi everybody. So I'm filming today from a mountain valley somewhere in Europe. And now this is not where the forefathers of the Amish once lived. However, maybe not too unlike those places. So I thought it'd be a good way to intro today's topic, which is where does the name Amish come from? So Amish origins go way back to the Anabaptist movement, which occurred in the early 1500s. Uh, this was a reform movement which originated in the city of Zurich. These reformists believed in several things contrary to the state church of the time, and those included adult baptism as well as non-resistance. They believed baptism should be something that's decided as an adult, not something that should be decided for a person when they're an infant. So these reformers took to meeting and baptizing themselves again as adults. Because of this, they got the name Anabaptists, which means rebaptizers. It was originally intended as a derogatory term. This was seen as a threat to the authority of the church and also the state. The idea of non-resistance, not fighting in wars, this was something potentially very destabilizing to governments at the time. This group was persecuted, in some cases tortured and killed by state authorities. There were even Anabaptist hunters which hunted the Anabaptists, captured them, and even executed them. Such was the threat here. And so they were really kind of a marginalized people. My reference at the beginning to the Mountain Valley has to do with the idea that they weren't allowed to own land. The best land was often not available to them. So they had to live and farm in more remote, mountainous areas. But at the same time, they developed a reputation for being very good at agriculture. So the, the Amish take their name from a man named Jacob Amon. He doesn't come onto the scene until much later, uh, later 1600s. He was, in fact, a convert and a reformist himself. He felt that the ways of the brethren at that time were, in some ways, too lax, specifically on communion service and also the practice of social shunning. Uh, or social avoidance, which is a form of discipline when members break the church's agreed-upon rules and is a practice that the Amish continue today. He advocated a stricter approach to shunning. So this eventually led to a conflict with another leader named Hans Reist. Long story short, they were not able to resolve this between themselves, and this led to a division or a split in 1693. The followers of Jacob Amon in this division became known as the Amish. They were the more conservative group here, and over time they became known for their more conservative ways, styles of dress, and so on. Amon himself, there's not a lot known about him. So he was a convert, and he was also an elder in the church, a minister. He lived in Alsace in France, which was an area where you found Anabaptists, the Amish. Amon worked as a tailor. Stephen Nolt, in his book A History of the Amish, writes that today few Amish know much about Amun. When asked about their church's origins, most typically stress the biblical or Reformation roots of their faith. So he's not particularly well known among Amish today, in part simply maybe reflecting the fact that not a lot is known about him. However, there's a more recent book about Jacob Amun called Grounded Upon God's Word, The Life and Labors of Jacob Amun. So if you're interested, you can check that out. Ancestors of today's Amish eventually ended up moving to what is today America. And uh, there are actually no more Amish in Europe today. The last congregation disappeared from a town in Germany in 1937 when they'd united with a Mennonite church. On that note, the Mennonites take their name from an even earlier leader named Menno Simons, who came well before Jacob Amon. He was an early leader of the Anabaptist movement in the 1530s and 1540s. Simons was a Dutch priest and had also been a convert to Anabaptism. He was so influential that his name became connected with the Anabaptists so much that they were even called Mennonites. That's why we have the name Mennonites today. So today there are many different Mennonite groups, some very progressive and modern, living basically identically to other Americans. And there are those Mennonites who are as conservative or even more conservative in some ways than some Amish. I actually did a video on that topic comparing Amish and Mennonites, which you can check out here. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button, and I look forward to talking to you next time.